Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, the Land Geek, their favorite niche real estate website, www.thelandgeek.com. And on today's roundtable podcast, we've got Bearland Aaron. Bearland, how are you? Hey, Mark, it's great to be back. And Melissa, thanks you for the great birthday wishes last episode. Well, my, it's, you know, it's my pleasure, my pleasure. And then we got on the call, of course, no nickname, Eric Peterson. <laughs> Eric, how are you? I'm doing good and happy to be back. Great, great. We've got the Big Papa. I love it when you call me Big Papa. <laughs> Tate Litchfield, super excited about his hockey team. Tate, how are you? I'm great. Very good. Thank you. And then he's just so relaxing and so calming. In fact, I could just quit meditating and just listen to Mike's voice, the Zen master himself, Mike Zeno. Breathe in the mailing, breathe out the marketing. Mike, how are you? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. Great to be here. And we've got the, um, the lone female voice, the representing the other 50% of the population. Yay. Jeannie Morham. Jeannie, what should your uh, nickname be? I don't know. We got to come up with one. We got to come up with one. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, we'll come up with a good one. We'll ask Kurt. What's okay. a good Jeannie nickname? <laughs> and, uh, and of course, last but not least, you know him. You love him. Six Sigma. Scott Todd from scotttodd.net, landmodo.com. And of course, you should be automating your Craigslist and your Facebook postings, postingdomination.com forward slash the land geek. Scott Todd, how are you and your mini bat? The mini bat's great. I'm great. And uh, I'm optimistic that the Tampa Bay Lightning will win their game and uh, meet up with Tate's Golden Knights in the. Stanley Cup. That would be exciting, right? It like would, to have, have a team, you know. It's not what we want. We want they, you guys to lose because – Yeah, yeah. yeah. We'll good. see. We'll see. But we won't have any problems steamrolling them. That would be my prediction. Yeah. Oh. And, and Tate, you know uh, Eric Peterson is going to be rooting for the Tampa Bay Lightning. Yeah, but the rest of us will be rooting for the upstart Vegas Knights. Yeah, you know, you don't get to choose where you're born, but you can't adopt the Vegas Golden Knights, right? That's right. That's right. Um, I do want to remind the listeners today's podcast is sponsored by my upcoming book coming out this week as you're listening to this. We're actually going to be next week or it just came out this week um, because it's coming out on the 28th, right? Yeah. Okay. So this comes out like the next day. So um, it's out. It's out. The dirt is, yeah. So go to uh, thelandgeek.com forward slash dirt rich or just go on Amazon. And search for Dirt Rich. And um, please uh, let us know what you think of the book. Leave a review. Um, I'm, I know I've been hazing Jeannie. She has the book and she hasn't even left a review yet. It's coming. Uh, it's coming okay, today. So, but that brings us to our first topic of feeling guilty. So Jeannie, what's going on with you? <clears throat> well, I, I don't know if, our, if the listeners know, but... Um, my coach is on here. So I'm actually a student. So I really appreciate you having me on here as a student. So I had a, an amazing call with Tate and we went over the Craigslist and he did an amazing job for an hour and blew my mind and also my husband's mind. And, and then they wanted me to, and then my coach is on here too, as well as Mike, and they wanted me to follow up with them. I didn't. And, and I think about, I think why I didn't, I think I came up with a lot of excuses and I, I kind of wanted to run and hide because it was really overwhelming. And I know that it's going to take me some time, but I'm selling on eBay. So I found myself wanting to go to the least, you know, the path of least resistance. So I'm like, I'm just going to go on eBay. I don't have to learn this, but I do need to learn it. And I, so I, I came up with a lot of excuses and now I feel guilty. And you know, what's amazing about coaching is I have to be accountable to Mike and to Tate. So it was really hard for me to be on this podcast today because I, I had to, I had to own up to it that I didn't follow through and I didn't do what I was supposed to do. So I'm, I'm embarrassed and humbled. <laughs> and I'm, I just want to be honest because I know that there are people that go through that in land geek. And that's, that's why I love coaching so much. I would not have bought and sold land if it wasn't for coaching. 
Yeah, I think it's a, I think it's a great topic. And I think all of us can relate. Um, Bearland Aaron started in coaching, Eric started in coaching, everyone on the call started in coaching. And at some point you get to, you hit that dip and what's, what is the, the term Scott? It's like we either, uh, freeze, uh, fight or flee, right? Is that what, right? Yeah. And so, you know, we'll see that happen when, when people hit the hit something outside their comfort zone and just the normal sort of response is one of those three things. And, um, I'm, I'm guilty of it myself, right? My default is more to, uh, freeze. Like I just won't do anything. Mm -hmm. Um, but unlike Jeannie, I won't necessarily have the courage to like (laughs) come and show up. Like it might take me, you know, a few weeks and then, you know, do I lie? Do I say this is why I didn't do it? Or do I be honest and be like, you know, or whatever it is. So I, I kind of go through that myself um, in, in various different things. Bearline Aaron shaking his head. Bearline Aaron, what's your feeling about that as far as, um, you know, I mean, let's just face it. Like life takes you off track and then you have to get back on track. Mm-hmm. Right. So yeah. I think the ultimate question is, how do you do that? Mm-hmm. Well, first, I'd like to say uh, kudos to Jeannie. Um, it's a great testament to character that you pushed through all that and showed up anyway. So nice job. Uh, as far as pushing through that, man, that's a hard thing. Um, you know, with two teenage kids, Mark, you can relate, Scott, uh, Eric and Tate, not yet, maybe. But um, man, life takes you off track very fast. And it has a it has its way of getting you off track and then keeping you off there with one thing after another after another. Um, it, it's kind of the grit thing, you know, um, you have to, once you realize that it's happened because, you know, you know, there's people out there that are such, so strong minded that they can keep things from taking them off track. They're so focused and so regimented, but I'm not one. Um, so when those things do get me off track, you know, I, once I recognize it, then it's just a matter of kind of grit, like, okay, I have to draw a boundary here. I have to tell maybe this person, no, I can't do this for you. Or, or that person, I can't, you can't have this time. You know, I have to unschedule what we were going to do that sort of thing and get back on track, spend my time getting ads back out, getting a uh, property on Facebook, mailing, um, you know, a few extra offers because I missed a day or two. So now I got to make that up for the week and get my set amount of offers out. Um, so it's a matter of just being, um, cognizant to what's going on in your life and noticing when you get off track and then making those promises to yourself to uh, change that action and get back into your groove. Yeah, absolutely. Eric Peterson, how about you? Um, what's, what's your take? Well, I think, <clears throat> excuse me, what I would add to that is just um, – just getting back on track as soon as possible. So if it's something like, you know, I mean, this isn't Jeannie's situation exactly, but just as an example, um, if you're posting ads every day and you know, you get sick or you're away or something and you miss five days, well, the best thing to do is as soon as, you know, you have the opportunity again, um, make yourself get back into that habit and, and start it all over again. Um, that's, that's the best advice I can give is just, um, don't be discouraged by not doing what, you know, you had told yourself you were going to do, but instead just find a way to, to get it done and, and build that habit around it again. Yeah, I love it. Tate, how about you? You know, um, it, this business, it's all about consistency, right? And we're going to run into times in our life where, you know, life throws us a curveball and we're not able to do things the way that we want. But I'm a big believer that practice makes permanent, right? And whether that be in this business or something else, whether it's exercising, if you do it every single day, it just becomes a permanent fixture in your daily routine. And, you know, I understand that you know, what I shared with you, Jeannie, kind of blew your mind and it might have been uh, a little bit more than 
you even knew you were capable of or what was required. But, you know, if you dissect it and break it down bit by bit, piece by piece, you will be able to crack that code. You're smart. You can handle this. And I think anybody can. It's just a matter of their grit, right? Just sit down and, and do what needs to be done to get the job done. And it's hard. I mean, coming back from vacation, everybody knows the feeling of getting back and not wanting to do things again because you're still feeling a little lazy and you'd rather sleep in and have a late brunch. But, you know, that's, that's not the way it works. We work hard now so we can play hard later. So that's my thoughts on it. But, you know, it's never too late to make the changes. So decide you're going to do it, do it. Then Master Mike? Yeah, um, getting back on track, feeling overwhelmed or all these things life can throw at you. That's the genesis of the whole um, favorite quote that Scott loves, breathe in the mailing, breathe out the marketing. It's just basically, you know, all these things that can distract our attention. And, you know, the easiest way to get back on track is to just go to the fundamentals, right? So go back to what we know works. We can generate um, a lot of potential deals by mailing and a lot of potential sales by marketing. So, you know, the rest of the stuff you'll have to deal with, but if you can get that stuff, that's, you know, the easiest way to get back on track is just to isolate some time and focus your attention to the things that really matter. And, you know, I think mailing and marketing, if you were to successfully get that done, you know, at the beginning of the week or whatnot, then you give yourself a nice pat on the back. You've really taken a big step forward to, for your business. And, uh, and then you can, from there, move on to uh, other things, but, and, and you'll feel just, you know, you got to slow down. You know, that's what the whole idea behind, you know, th that kind of meditation of breathing in and out is just to slow yourself down from all these whirling uh, thoughts in your mind, right? And it's the same thing in the business. So I think mailing and marketing are, are back to the fundamentals and, and very uh, hyper-focused can get you back on track. Yeah, absolutely. Scott Todd, how about you? What's your take? I would just, I would just always say like, you know, like it's so easy to look at other people and to think like, Oh, they, they never slip or they never fall. And the reality is, is that we all do like we're, we're all there, you know, like you're not the only one. I think that the, the difference of what you see sometimes is that uh, the people that you look to uh, and the people that you kind of like, I don't want to say look up to, but the people that you're seeing that, that are like, that look flawless to you or look like they've never been there. The difference is that they've been there and they just got back on the horse and they started riding again. Right. Like you're, if you're going to ride a horse, you're going to fall off. That's just the way that it is, you know? So essentially the people that you're looking at, you're looking at them and you're, you're saying, well, man, they never slip up. The reality is, is that we all do. And you know, you've got to say like, I big deal move on and let's just get back on the horse and, and do it. Like you can correct whatever it is like that, that you're feeling. You can just say, Hey, it's over. Boom. It's yesterday. Now we're moving forward and let's ride. Yeah. I mean, let's how ride. about the fear? How about the fear of the guilt of, you know, saying I'm going to do something and then having to, to face, you know, your coach um, and then kind of taking it on, just faith your coach is not going to be judgmental they're going to be more supportive or encouraging or like eric peterson you know the burnett's thought like oh he's going to let us off the hook life is getting in the way and eric's like no i'm not letting you off the hook and that that was like the, the little kick they needed um so how do you kind of bridge that gap and and let you know is it just a relationship i mean mike zano what, what do you think about that? Well, I think what's good is you're working with someone, you know, that has done what you're trying to do and is still doing that, that it becomes very relatable, right? So the stories, I think, you know, the, the anecdotes, the, you know, talking about what we've done and the challenges that we've encountered and how we overcame them can really assist. So I think that, um, I think that relationship is important, you know, to realize that, you know, Scott said, we're all going to, you know, fall off track at times. And you know what, this is what I did to get back on track, you know, and, and this is how ultimately I'd made sure those things got done. And I understand what you're going through. So I think it's, it's good. It's relatable. I think the fact that, uh, you know, we're all doing the same business and some of us have been just doing it longer. And so we have more insight and more experience and we convey that to people and, and it, it can be reassuring for one, 
to know that uh, this isn't something that they've only the one they're the only ones that ever experienced it, right? That uh, yeah, we've we've been through that and we continually run into that. But this is how we overcome that. This is how we put processes in place, systems, automation, delegation. So even when we don't feel like doing something, or we can't do something, it's still getting done. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Gene, let's let's um, you know not make it so personal for you and have you be a panelist now, right? So someone comes up to you and says, hey, um, you know, how do I sort of bridge this gap? I'm, I'm feeling guilty. I'm not taking the action I should be taking in flight school or, or coaching. And I heard you on the podcast. How did you, how would you recommend I, I keep showing up every day, even though, you know, I, I don't feel like doing it. I agree with what everybody is saying and that's why they're amazing coaches because I've never felt judged by Mike. And so that's, and I don't want to let him down. So I think that I'm really hard on myself because I I don't want to disappoint him. So I would take his approach to, and be not judgmental, but just say, you know what, let's just go from here. You know, we've learned and let's just keep moving forward. I think once you're judgmental, that's when it, someone can really go downhill and spit, spin out of control. But I like what everybody said, especially Scott too, is that, okay, let's just move on. And I love that philosophy because you know what, we, we're just going to learn and then just keep going. I, I'm afraid of people that are going to stop, you know, we got to keep encouraging them to keep going and, uh, and be successful. So again, I, I just can't say enough about coaching because all of these gentlemen are, are very, um, they, they understand it. And they're encouraging. So they're not going to make you feel bad because you already feel bad. I mean, I think you're harder on yourself than anybody can be on you. So they just encourage you. Um, so I, I would have just encouraged them just like everybody else here. And, and like, and I'm mod, I, I need to model like Mike is modeling for me. And that is, he's very, very encouraging. And when I'm negative on our call, sometimes he can spin it and just be very positive. So when I get off the call, I feel empowered. So he empowers me. So I would, I would empower others as well. No. Yeah. It's fantastic. There's, there's a book, I think uh, Scott might've mentioned first uh, on one of the podcasts called the four agreements. I don't know if it's like this, this Toltec wisdom type book and the four agreements are uh, be impeccable with your word. Don't take anything personally. Don't make assumptions. Always do your best. Um, And I think for you, the, the guilt piece might've been, making that assumption that, Oh, they're going to think something of me. Exactly. Right? That, that was, and, you're right. Yeah. yeah. And, I, and I, I think for, for us as a, as a coaching team, like we should sort of, you know, take these agreements and like make like, like what would our three agreements be? If you're getting into coaching, like do your best, um, embrace the suck <laughs> and uh, mail and market right every day. And if you don't get back on it and, or ask for help, like those, those could be our four agreements. Eric Peterson, what would you say would be a a good, a good agreement type thing for a new coaching client? I think those are pretty good. Um, Nothing, nothing else pops into mind right away. Tate, anything else you'd add? You know, show up, work hard, be efficient. Yeah. Scott. Oh man. I wasn't expecting that right away. I'd, I'd say, uh, you know, uh, I'd say like be, be, be aggressive. And what I mean by that is go get what you want and, you know, don't stop until you get what you want. Uh, so that, you know, that way your coach knows too, like, uh, Hey, this is this, I'm serious about this. This is a non-negotiable piece for me. I'm going to get this by X or I'm going to do this or I've got to do this. I want to do it. So, you know, no, 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 your end goal, know your why and don't and keep fighting for it. Right. Right. Bearline Aaron, how about you? Would, anything else you'd add? Um, yeah. I think a good agreement would be that if you, um, if you're going to get, if you're stuck on something to make the agreement to do it um, even terribly the first time, just to accomplish it and then you can clean it up and get better and but as long as you have moved forward it's a win yeah genie any other agreements you'd want to see in that list 
You know, they're all really good. I, I don't, I think you really need to be honest, but I don't know how that would fit in to the agreement because if you're, if you have a, if you're coaching, you want to make sure that you're honest with one another. Right. But I, I don't know how that would play. I mean, I don't know how that would be an agreement, but maybe that would come through. Yeah. What, what, what's that Richard Feynman principle? Um, you know, don't, don't fool yourself, but know that you're the easiest person to fool or, 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 or something like that. Or, or something. I mean, I, I forgot what it is, but it's like, he's like a famous quote, this uh, like genius physicist. But um, I think sometimes we, we do fool ourselves and to be, you know, really, really truthful with ourselves in our effort level and our persistence and our grit and our, um, you know, just taking stock every day of like, did I really do my best today to move the needle forward in my business or did I hide today? And then it's okay if you did, right? Because, you know, no one, you know, even LeBron James takes a day off, right? Like, um, you know, we can't, we, we need to have a little R&R, but, um, but be honest about it, right? And just know, okay, this today, I am going to take it to next level. I'm going to up the intensity. Instead of sending out 20 ads, I'm going to send out 30 ads, right? Um, instead of doing county research at this level, I'm going to go even deeper. I'm going to spend 15 more minutes on it and I'm really going to know my numbers. Uh, Mike Zana, what are your thoughts? I think I would have uh, an agreement would be like give and um, give, get, you know, receive and give back. I think that one thing that's truly beautiful about our group is our community and you see people helping people at different steps. You'll see it in the Facebook group, people that uh, it's really empowering. You know, you learn something and then someone new comes along and you can, they have a question in the Facebook group and you can answer that. Uh, this is a long-term relationship we're building here. You know, even people go to coaching, it's a year long program, but then they, you know, the goal is to stay part of the community. This is such a wonderful group. And the reason why we continue, my wife and I go to all the boot camps is because we're surrounded by people doing this business at a super high level. Um, you know, it always pulls us to a higher level ourselves and realize that this is a glass ceiling that we, that, uh, you know, that we've hit, we can go higher and it's by relating and giving and giving back, right. And giving back to the community that helped you grow to where you are and can help you grow even further. I mean, the longer you stay connected with this group of, of people and the mindset that we all have, the, the further you're going to take this business. So just remember, it's, it's a, this is a, a long-term process. This is, this is a great network of people. So receive, but also give back within the community to those people that have supported you. So I think it's just that together. I, I think that would be a good agreement. Yeah. So Jeannie, do we have our four agreements? What do you think? Four? Of the four that was the I mean, we have to keep, to keep it to four. That I was think four. Seven. <laughs> I don't know. So, Gene, what are your what are your four favorite agreements now? I, 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 I don't, I, I don't know. I'm. Like, that I was a lot. You love my Gene. You can say you love my Gene. Yeah, we we'll, we'll, we'll have to we'll have to go back. And listen we have to, to go podcast. back and listen and random. <laughs> yeah, and come back to it. No pressure. But, um, I think that's good. I, I yeah, absolutely. But um, I think that brings us to the next topic, which is if we're going to rewind the tape. And we're going to get into this business. And we're, let's say, you know, we're telling a buddy about it and saying, hey, you know, I listen to this podcast. These people are making passive income, buying and selling raw land. And they've got it 90% automated. It's a one-time sale. They get recurring income. There's all these benefits. I don't need a lot of money. Um, and then the next question is, well, don't you need to have a real estate background, Right. Where are these people coming from? Eric Peterson, what was your background? My background is in graphic design um, and you know, a little bit of technology along with that. So I had absolutely no background in, in real estate. Um, really, I mean, aside from buying a house, right? I mean, that's yeah. it. So what about your wife? Did she say, hey, you know, maybe you should have some kind of real estate background before you, you go into this. No, she didn't. Um, but I, I could easily see how, um, people would have that opinion. Um, you know, it's, 
you think about doing real estate transactions and the immediate thought is, you know, again, uh, relating it to closing on a house or something and how complicated all those documents are. And there's, you know, all this information to know about, but the reality is um, anybody can learn that. Um, and it's, it's so much simpler and um, uh, shorter, I guess, in, in the realm of just dealing with raw land. Um, we're not dealing with mortgages and um, title insurance on, in a lot of cases. So it's just uh, person to person transactions and it, you can learn it. It doesn't, it doesn't really matter your background. If you have some technology background um, and, you know, can learn things on the computer, that's helpful, but even that's not necessary. I remember Bob Demick spent three hours trying to scrub a list uh, in Excel because he had no Excel experience. And then we were like, whoa, whoa, whoa. just here. We'll, like it took us like two minutes. And then, you know, if you are a technophobe, um, even if you're not in coaching, you can always go to Fiverr. Like there's always someone out there that can help with that. Um, Scott Todd, let's pick on Tate for a second. You want to? It's always fun to pick on Tate. I think we should pick on Tate. So here's a guy who has absolutely no background. Right. <laughs> Maybe no, no, like, he he's like, a loser. Why not? Uh, he has a background. He does have a background. What's his background? Well, he didn't, he, he didn't even work experience. That's not true. He worked one day for the government and he was out. <laughs> Two and a half. Okay, so he, he had enough work experience to know he doesn't like to work. <laughs> and he's out. Ah, oh, jeez. All right. Does, does Tate have an advantage? Having no background, having no bad habits coming in completely new like a new lens nothing out there to j he's not jaded right um he it just does that is that an advantage mark no you know <laughs> the the i was listening to a podcast the other day and um it was i i forgot what company it was but they you know it was a they were talking to some founders or whatever of this company and the, the two guys were like this one guy on the podcast, he's basically like, yeah, we did this. And the problem is that we didn't know we couldn't do it. <laughs> you know, and I think that what happens is when you just don't know any better, then you're just like assuming that it's just the way that it is. And then you're, you're more inapt to follow the recipe. And we know that the recipe works. I mean, like, that's one of the things I teach in flight school is follow this, this recipe that we're going to lay out. And the reality is, is that, you know, when, when you have those bad habits, when you, when you have biases in place over something, well, then what happens is then you get sidetracked. And, and in a way, I think that you, you start to convince yourself that it's not possible. So maybe yeah. Tate did have an advantage. Yeah. Well, so Tate, let's pick on Mike for a second. You All want right. to? Since we just picked yeah. on you. Easy, easy, easy. <laughs> easy, does, easy does, right. <laughs> does Mike Zeno have an advantage based on being a firefighter? Because when you're a firefighter, right, our instincts are when we see danger, we see fire, we, we all run away, right? So we take fire as risk. So he takes real risk every single day, right? So having sort of that background of, well, I'm not risking my life here. I'm just sending out <laughs> mailers, right? <laughs> like this is really easy compared to about everything else I could be doing in life. And it's relatively not that risky. Does Mike have an advantage with that background? Yeah, absolutely. I think Mike realized very quickly on early on that, Hey, nobody's forcing me to buy any of this stuff. All I'm doing is sending you a piece of let, you know, an offer in the mail and, if it turns out I don't like it, so what, right? Like he, he wasn't afraid to take the action. And I kind of can relate to that. I didn't know that it was not normal for, you know, to buy land at five, 20 cents on the dollar. I, I thought everybody did that. And so when I started making the offers, I just kind of went into it. I'd heard the podcast. I was like, okay, I'm, I'm doing this. I didn't know that that wasn't common. Yeah. Jeannie, do you want to pick on Bearland Aaron with me? Yeah. <laughs> Let's pick on him. So Bearland Aaron comes in with an entrepreneurial background, owns his own company, right? Used to taking risk, used to delegation, 
used to systems, used to processes, used to working really, really hard and risk. Does he come in with an advantage? Uh, well, I think maybe a little bit because he understands you got to work hard. And that's an advantage. And being an entrepreneur, this is, this is you have to have a, almost an entrepreneur attitude because you know you, it's, you got to be pushing this through yourself. You, you're not going to an eight to five job. So he understands that. So that does, he does have a little bit of an advantage, but um, I don't think above anybody else, you know. Barely Aaron, do you think your background made you more suitable for this business? Do you think that it was a good background to come in with? Um, in some ways, yeah, because I'm used to when things like the ebb and flows of market and business, like when things go down, I know they don't always continue to go down. Um, same thing on the upside. Um, so it makes it a little easier to weather those things. Um, the risk is a little more acceptable because, you know, to start a business in the first place, you know, I've, I've been through that risk once before. And I know that, you know, it's not life or death. You know, there's, there's always, you know, solutions and that sort of thing. Uh, my big, my biggest disadvantage was actually that my business and most of my career before was um, kind of more of a manufacturing, um, hands-on industrial kind of background. So all the tech of our business was really a whole new thing to me. So that was something I had to learn and overcome. And that was uh, a, a mental a mental thing for me because you can learn anything, you know, it's just a matter of getting your head around it. So um, kind of a mixed bag, but overall, I think an advantage. Right, right. I mean, Scott, Todd, let's be honest, right? You don't have to have a real estate background to get into this. You don't have to have a, be an entrepreneur to get into this. You don't have to be somebody that risks their life every day to get into this and do well, right? So if there is no specific background that is the equation for success, is there a background that does not lend itself to being successful in real estate? And then Tate, we're going to get to you. Or Tate, you want to just jump in? No, no, no. I like where you're going with this. I want to hear what Scott has to say. Yeah. Well, I would, I would say that... Uh... Man, I might make some enemies here, but I would say that the people who are realtors, right? Those those people who are realtors today or have had a history of, of being a realtor, um, they're the ones I think that struggle at first. And the reason that they struggle at first, in my opinion, is because one, they've always looked at land and they've been like, it's, it's not worth it right? Like they, they see land as something that's like, you know, just junk, if you will. And then the other thing that they're, that they're struggling with in a way is they are thinking about a commission mindset. I got to buy this and I got to sell it. They don't always think about it from buy low, sell high. They're thinking of a percentage. I got to get this percentage. And I'm not saying that they don't, they don't turn because I've seen people who have been realtors do this it's just they got to suspend their beliefs to move faster. Okay. okay. Tate, what are you going to say? I was going to say, I, I've been fortunate enough to work with a lot of people in this business, and I've found that anybody can do it. Realistically, anyone can do this. And each individual is going to come to the table with their own different opinion of what success is within this business, right? Maybe you want to make enough money to pay for a family vacation. Maybe you want to make a career out of this. The possibilities are limitless. And that's what I love about it. If I want to do something unique or do something big, I know how to do it. I rinse and repeat what I've already done and I can make anything happen. And I think that more important than your background is your attitude, your, you know, the mindset that you have. You got to go into this knowing that it's going to be hard at times, but then other times, your property is just going to fly off the shelf and you can't keep it in stock. But you've also got to realize you're going to have to spend some time burning that midnight oil, learning the recipe, perfecting it, finding people who you know, like, and trust to help you run your business. Right. And if you do that and you build, you know, those good, um, good connections, then yeah, 
your business can propel you forward into whatever you want. So attitude, I think, is a hundred times more important than background. Mike Zeno. Yeah, I like um, exactly where they're going with this. And, and the way that Scott said it kind of really resonates. I tell people when they're going to the flight school with Scott Todd, what they need to do is empty their cup. They literally need to just suspend everything they've already known, especially the people I talked to, they've done house flipping. I said, listen, you in real estate. I said, just empty your cup, learn the process that he shows you step by step, execute as he shows you how to do. Later on, when you get this down, all of your life experience, no matter who you are, it all comes in like fine seasoning and it'll all come over and it'll make you that much better. But you got to get to that point first. You got to empty your cup, come to point zero, as Tate and Scott was saying, and, and just allow this instruction to seep in, take action. Don't overthink it. Just do what you're told to do at the right time. And that's what's great about flight school is that you know what to do and when to do it. it there's no execution problem. And then later on, all that experience, it'll come in and it'll make your business all that sweeter. Is that even a way to yeah, say ab something? Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. And, that, and that, that actually brings us what Tate was saying with a growth mindset, that, that mindset of continuous growth, growing education, and so we kind of looked at that and said, well, once you graduate from flight school, right, you have a few other avenues for continuous growth. And then, so that's why we created the Top Gun program. And once you're done and you graduate from coaching, right, now you can go into the VIP program and get these monthly advanced modules that include an execution session. And you continue to grow, you continue to get better, you continue to sharpen your saw. And I think that um, it's just a lifelong process. Like you never sort of, you know, know it all. Like I'm constantly learning. Um, and I think that those new programs are really going to help people that, you know, maybe they're at 5,000 a month in passive, but they want to get to 10,000 in, you know, 2018 and beyond. Well, here you go. So if you want to learn more about Top Gun, um, if you're in flight, you know, getting ready to graduate, school or you're just graduating from coaching or you've already graduated from coaching and you want to go into the VIP program um, for that continuous education, just schedule a call with Mike Zeno or Scott Bossman at, and go to the land.com forward slash training and they'll kind of give you the rundown and see if it's, if it's a good fit for you or not and, um, and kind of go from there. So Eric Peterson, are, are we good? We're good. It, but it's time for that that tip of the week a website a resource a book oh, something wow. actionable for the art of passive income listeners to put on the spot and today their lives. <laughs> what do you got <laughs> is all Scott right i'm gonna come to your rescue with the mini bat i don't know no no i got it i'm always ready <laughs> so like a boy scout <laughs> today boy we're scout. gonna go with get bravo which is g e t bravo b r a v o dot com um yep, i have not tried this myself however i came across it recently and um thought it could be a nice tool for um getting video testimonials from not only the the people that sell you land but those that buy your land um as you you know need kind of to, to build that trust among those that are working with you. Um, this is a, a great tool that helps facilitate that process. Um, I think there's a, there's a free trial and uh, then there's a, a paid version um, from, from that point on. But uh, the, the idea is it makes it easy for people to do video testimonials for you. So wow, it's pretty, it's pretty inexpensive, actually. You, you can get it at like five bucks a month, mm -hmm. 25 videos. That's pretty good. Although, I mean, Eric, why, why wouldn't I just ask somebody to make me a video on their phone? Well, I think, I think the idea is that this is um, supposed to make it easier for them. You know, I mean, depending on who your clients are, um, they may or may not be comfortable or know how to make you a video testimonial and send it to you. Um, the sending it to you can, can often be complicated. So, um, so yeah, that's what I got. Really? Really, Eric? <laughs> Come on, Mark. Fine. You know it. Fine. I, 
I like it. I like it. I'm just, I'm just hazing you. I just want I really just want to see if, you know, Scott was going to bring out the mini bat as I was kind of pushing it. So there it is. There, there it is. Wait, Scott, you're on, you're on mute. I said the bat was, is always close, but you know, what, what are you doing to get your testimonials, Mark? I'm asking people for a testimonial. You're hounding people. Yeah, I'm hounding people. I'm, 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 and I'm basically saying, you know, look, subscribe, rate, and review, and I'm going to give you this. Right? Right. The $97 Passive Income Launch Kit course for free and Dirt Rich book, the Kindle version for free. Just leave a review. I don't have to pay five bucks a month. For, uh, for a site. Okay. I guess, you know. You don't have video. Don't know, some people don't know how to leave an iTunes review, but then we have a, a tutorial on the website, thelandgeek.com forward slash iTunes dash review. Walks you through how to do it. You thought of everything. I did. And then as far as like the land site for Frontier Properties, luckily for me, my, my clients just have a smartphone and can take a video and they know how to send it. <laughs> I can just oh, teach them how to send it. You're forgetting about those clients that only want to send you money orders and you know, they've got a flip phone and you know, technology is a challenge. So yeah, I mean, you know, that's true. Uh oh. What's Here's Scott Scott's money orders. Look, money orders. No joke. Money order. Money order. This came today. Check. Check. Like real mailbox money. Real mailbox money, man. Yeah, that's why I get, that's why we have geek pay, Scott. Stupid thing. I, I don't I won't even I won't even go to the mailbox anymore. If they're not on geek pay and it's not automated, they're not for me. You can always make more money, you can't get more time. Look at the time you're wasting. I'm gonna start, start showing off his office. Checks checks are the new Bitcoin, baby. Checks are the new Bitcoin. <laughs> All right. Well, I do want to remind the listeners, um, if you do get Dirt Rich, please go to Amazon, leave us a review. It really helps. Uh, there are going to be bonuses involved if you do that. Um, Mike Zeno will give you all the details of it, but at least $500 off any uh, course or service that we offer. Um, if you go ahead and leave an Amazon review for the book and, uh, and schedule a call with Mike or Scott Bossman. So please do that. And always help us because Jeannie, you know, is not going to keep coming on the podcast every week unless she sees our reviews going up on iTunes. So, you know, she's, she's, she's good that way. She's good that way. So please subscribe, rate and review the podcast. And again, we're going to send you the $97 passive income launch kit for free. Just email support at the landgeek.com your screenshot. And if you don't know how to do a screenshot, email Eric Peterson, he will walk you through it. Or find you a tool. Find you a that would do it. And uh, we'll go from there. Brutal. So, uh, are we ready? Brutal. One, two, three. Let, Let freedom ring. Were you Once again, perfect without bear land. I think he was protesting. What is this? Did I miss something? <laughs> he can't do it, Mike, because he can't keep up. He's been suspended. You know, have have any of you listened to like the end of the last podcast? Yeah, we were there. You, no, no, you haven't listened to the recording because you're like, oh, that was great. That was great. And it's terrible. No, I thought it was fantastic. No, no, it was fantastic. <laughs> we were here. We were here. You were not. We you were involved not. in the delay, so you, you can't tell. You, you got to hear the composite. To- the problem is, is still you're delayed even on your phone, the internet's so bad. This is what, you know what I can tell you, Aaron, in this instance, this is something that the fight department years ago, a guy came on and he was like, I just don't get, I'm a funny guy, but you guys, you guys, I don't get you human. I said, listen, there's more of us than I of you and we tell you what's funny. <laughs> <laughs> That's how it works. Uh, well, in that respect, I guess it was all together and it was a good one. <laughs> All right. Well, listen, I'm, I've got to meet Ori for lunch, uh, for Indian, and I'll definitely be over ordering and saving some for Scott to ship. I'm going to get the naan. I'm going to get the uh, chicken tikka masala, and I'm going to get the 
uh, what's it called? Palak paneer, the spinach. Or sag paneer. Sag paneer. A little garlic naan. Mm. So, Scott, be on the lookout for uh, some, some Indian coming your way. Ah, uh, no, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. All right, thanks, guys. Talk to you later. Yeah. See you. Bye.